Hello friends, welcome. Today we will be talking about two basic theories in economic development. First is the Rostow's economic stage model and the second is the Wall Street's capitalistic world economic model. So let's start with Rostow's model. Rostow basically talked about the hierarchy in which a nation or a country grows and each nation or each society must pass through the various developmental stages. These are basically economic and social development stages through which each society passes. Now, before we start about the details of Rostow's theory, let's first understand the five basic stages. So the name of these stages and order in which they flow is very important. So let's first try to understand that. The first is a traditional society followed by preconditions for takeoff then take off, drive to maturity, and a stage of high mass consumption. Let's take the example of United States of America. Traditionally, before it was discovered, what happened? There was limited technology, and the society was static. So most of the people were dependent on agriculture. There was barter system or exchange of goods. And subsistence means people were growing to meet their own needs or for self-sufficiency. They did not have the idea to export or import things. Okay, So whatever they were producing were for their own purpose. So these are the three basic characteristics of traditional society. It had limited technology and was static in nature. Slowly and gradually, there was external influence and market effect coming in, which led to conditions for pre-takeoff. Here what happened, agriculture got commercially exploited. So people started to develop agriculture on a commercial basis. So they tried to think that let's produce more, specialize in certain kind of agriculture, develop farmhouses, uh, try to develop surplus in agriculture so that we can export it. Okay. So that was the thought of specializing and growing surplus in a specific thing. Then developing the infrastructure of the region, that led to installation of physical infrastructure and emergence of a socio-political elite group. So what happened was physical infrastructure developed and manufacturing strengthened in the region. As manufacturing strengthened, there were more industries coming up into the region. For example, in the United States, initially there was basically before it was discovered, the, it was mainly agriculture society with subsistence. Slowly and gradually, they tried to, the Central Belt of America, which was uh, mainly agri agrarian in nature, tried to specialize, develop surplus, and export it. Slowly and gradually, industries started coming up in Central America. There was a lot of investments. So you had Europeans coming in. You have people from Spain and France getting into the region. So there was kind of regional growth on the periphery of the uh, nation. So the peripheral areas which were um, discovered by the colonialists or the Europeans thereby started to develop as investment centers, centers of regional growth and a lot of industries started to come up because these industries slowly and gradually provided facilities for export. So what happened slowly? Investment exceeds 10 percent of national income okay and there was development of socio-political institution this led to drive to majority that means the nation started to develop a very wide industrial and commercial base there was huge diversification lot of innovation r d research and development and investment coming up finally what happened all this drive to maturity led to stage for high mass consumption, there was exploitation of comparative advantage in international trade. That means the society became consumer oriented. They started providing people exactly what they are looking for. The service sector started to develop. So now in present USA, what is the most strength, uh, most strong pillar of the country is the service sector. You have more flourishing of uh, durable products. So this is how Rostov in his model in 1971 explained the various stages in economic growth 
So these were the five stages. The order of the stages and the name in which they uh, follow is very important. Now, what are the basic characteristics or highlights of this model? This is, a, as we can see, a kind of linear model. Since it's a linear model, it tries to analyze uh, things in a linear fashion, but it is neo-traditional. Neo-traditional because it's not traditional, but a new element of traditionality is introduced in it because we are saying, we are talking about stages of high mass consumption, which is a reality in the present day. And it also tries to analyze or understand various factors by means of complex interactions. So you have agriculture, then you have infrastructure, you talk about industrialization, investment, and finally, consumer-oriented or service sector. So these are the basic highlights of the model. Now, what were the major criticisms of this model? Since this model follows a linear fashion, we cannot say that each society follows this path. We cannot say each society which was agriculture will grow up to be industrial and finally will turn into service sector. It's not necessary that all nations move in this order. There can be haphazard order, there can be irregularity or jumps. So for example, a country can directly move from traditional to a stage of takeoff. Okay, It does not represent the non-communist nations. So basically the uh, uh, the capitalistic society, it does not talk about non-uniform distribution. So this is the case when I am saying there is uniform distribution of resources and everything in the nation. But if there is non-uniform distribution, we cannot say this model holds true. And in this model, what is not considered is market stagnation. So you are not taking into account the factor of market stagnation. So these are the things that we clearly talk about or be, uh, that were basically criticized in the Rostov's model. Since there was criticism in this model, there were new models that started to come up. The next important model that we would be talking about today is the Wall Street's model. Wall Street in 1974 gave the model after Rostov. This model was known as Wall Street's capitalistic world economy model. It basically said that high income nations form the center of world economy and these high income nations usually get the money from colonial exploitation. So he divided the nations into three categories, core, semi-periphery and periphery. So core nations are the countries of United States of America, you have England, Spain, France, and then you have China and Russia. Okay, so these are the core nations that they talk about. They say that these core nations are rich, okay? They take raw material from the rest of the world. They have a lot of multinational corporations coming up, so they have a lot of MNCs, okay? And these are the nations which try to technically exploit the remaining nations, okay? So this was the core nations. Then you have the periphery nations. Periphery nations includes countries like Syria. Then you have countries of Central Africa. You have all the less developed nations of Southeast Asia. Okay. So these were the periphery nations. These periphery nations have huge quantity of inexpensive labor. So what they, the core countries try to do, they try to get the inexpensive labor and cheap raw material from these peripheral nations to the core nations. So the peripheral nation supplies cheap labor and cheap raw material to core nations. On the other hand, core nations, what they do, they try to maximize their profit and try to send consu consumption goods on a profit to peripheral nations. Then you have semi-periphery nations which are which are more powerful than the peripheral nations but less powerful than the core nations. So they are kind of semi-periphery. They have interrelations from both core nations and periphery nations and they affect the cycle of core and periphery. Countries like Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq. So these would be all countries of semi-periphery. They are not that weak, they are not that strong. So what Wall Street basically tried to explain was, if any country wants to flourish, okay, 
it would be only the high income group high income group nations or poor nations would flourish very well okay and they would flourish on the expense of the peripheral nations who under colonial era were exploited so peripheral nations exploitation led to prosperity of the core nations now there were lot of lot and lot of criticism on this theory what were the major criticisms let's understand the first basic criticism the first basic criticism was we cannot say that a country is prospering only if it is exploiting other nation a country a country can prosperous on various grounds so the reasons for prosperity can be hard work innovation of new technology ambition so we can wrongly say that wealth as zero sum commodity so this was the first major criticism so the people who criticized the wall street model said that those creations which developed wealth were due to high ambition their hard work and technologically they were more productive or innovated a lot of things so this was the first basic criticism of wall street model the next basic criticism was in wall street model people try to emphasize too much on rich so the critics say that we are blaming the core nations highly which is not the reality the core nations are also providing infrastructural support to the peripheral nations which is undermined okay so we cannot say that rich nations uh, are always wrong and they are always exploiting the peripheral nations so that was the second basic criticism the third basic criticism was the cultural factors are totally ignored so cultural factors are ignored meaning uh, we are trying to ignore the factors of family values okay so uh, we value families more rather than innovation but that is totally ignored in this model and finally corruption that is again a cause of undermining of a nation which is again ignored and we are just saying that there is an elite class which is prospering in the core nations while the periphery is not so these were the basic criticisms of the world streets model so in this session we talked about the two basic models those are the rostros model and the well streets model for economic development the next session we will be talking about the industrial development and industrial geography so stay tuned for those have a good day ahead